Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Miyuko and welcome back to my channel. All right, so today we're doing a Q&A video because it's been a while and uh, I didn't really know what I wanted to make otherwise. So we're doing it. Oh, and before we start, I just want to say, uh, hope you all are doing well. I know that the world is continuing to be a little wild, but it seems like there's a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel. So there's hope, which is great. It's been a while since we've had hope. So I hope that that hope is shining brightly through your life as well. So I went on my Instagram to ask you all to ask me any question that you might have around personal life, mental health, career stuff, adulting stuff, kind of everything and anything, which is the theme to my channel. And thank you so much to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. So here we go. Your go-to anxiety remedy. Yeah, this is usually what I do when I'm feeling anxious. I write myself in comfortable, soft stuff to warm myself up. I usually wear my glasses instead of my contacts. I'm usually drinking and sipping something warm and snacks. I mean, really when I'm feeling anxious, I'm just like fearful of something for oftentimes no good reason just my brain is just like yo let's just be really scared of something right now and kind of like almost get into a panic attack but not really but you are really scared about something so it's a lot of just finding comfort and uh fuzzy things warmth and good things to eat and drink that's just that's my formula for anxiety What equipment do you use for filming slash photography? I have a Canon EOS R to film these kinds of videos and most of my footage. For vlogging, I use a Canon G7X. I have a Rode Boom mic as well as a Zoom H4 N Pro handy recorder. I use a Manfrotto tripod regular ass SD cards that everybody else uses. You can actually check out all of the things that I use for filming and making videos and all of that kind of stuff at my Amazon storefront, which is linked in the description box down below. How do you manage to be consistent with projects and personal growth activities? Frankly, I'm like not consistent. The way that I stay consistent is to stay inconsistent. <laughs> like consistency is one of the things that I'm just actually pretty bad at. How good am I at staying consistent with stuff? Like long-term stuff? Yeah. Pretty bad. Uh-huh. Medium-term stuff? Uh-huh. Pretty bad. Uh-huh. Short-term stuff? Bad as well. <laughs> so you say I'm pretty bad at being consistent. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who've been around for long enough, you know that I've started so many projects and I didn't like finish them or I didn't keep them up for very long, but I'm actually kind of okay with it. I feel like I have a realistic expectation for myself that I change, I'm different every year and every day, and that's fine. As long as I'm just working on the stuff that I really want to work on and that I am like, I do have some sort of like thing that I want to reach for and I'm working towards that in some way, that's that's all I can ask for of myself really. Because I think consistency is really just all about how do you go from A to B, uh, knowing what B is. But if I don't want to get to B, then I'll just be like, I don't, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> Who is your favorite Terrace House member? Oh, so many. Ooh, I mean, like my favorite, just like everybody else is Hansung. He's just like, the coolest. He's the, he's the best. He's the best guy on there, I think. I also really liked Leo from the most recent season. He just seems really chill to hang out with. I also really liked Vivi from the most recent season. I really like her just like life values and stuff. I follow her on Instagram. I think she's super cool. Oh, and like Sana's queen. She's she's the queen. She's great. I also really like her too. Did you ever consider another career outside tech? Yeah, like weekly. I think ever since that I did my career switch from software engineering to content creation, I'm a little bit like, oh, I can do it if I try. Like, I feel like I've done it once before. So if I wanted to, I could do it again, probably, maybe naively, overconfidently. But you know, I mean, YouTubing in general is not like a forever career. I mean, the platform has only been around for like 15 years or so. So I'm constantly thinking about what's the long term? Where do I want to go next? So yeah, I think about this all the time. But don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. Like I still like doing this right now. 
I think if you do see an evolution, it'll be incredibly gradual. So don't, don't worry, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna career search yet. How often should I change my job as a developer? Honestly, as often as you want to. The great thing about tech and software development in general is that it's not taboo to change your job often. In fact, most software engineers change jobs on average like every one and a half to two years. After I learned that statistic on my own, I was just like, oh, okay, so I don't have to stay somewhere for five to 10 years if I don't want to. So I don't think it, there's actually any sort of like time duration that's taboo for jobs in tech, I guess. I mean, ultimately, I think to answer the question of how often you should change your job as a software developer is really just based on what do you want and are you getting that right now at your job? How often do you take time to reflect on yourself? Like every other day? or so. I don't have like a ritual per se where I just like sit down and I like journal or something like that. It just kind of floats in and out of my head. Oftentimes I reflect when I'm having like a difficult period in my life. It doesn't even have to be super difficult. It's just like if I'm not feeling it at a certain time in my life, that's usually when I'll take time to reflect to be like, why am I not feeling it? Like what's what's going on my Yuko? I mean, I'll also reflect when things are going really well and I'm feeling great too. I just, it's like almost second nature to me. Like I, if anytime I have idle time, then I'm usually reflecting on myself or others or the world. But you know, sometimes these reflections come when I'm like least expecting it as well. Like just watching like a SpongeBob SquarePants episode or I'm just like staring up at a tree or I'm listening to my friend talk about something super random, it'll just happen. If anything, my process is that I let it happen and I welcome it happening, if that makes sense. You ever thought about being a university instructor slash professor? Yeah, that's like one of the things that I'm considering. That would be cool. My parents are both teachers, so I've always thought it'd be really cool to teach. So if y'all are university people, hook a girl up, you know? Maybe, I don't know. I don't know what I teach. If I do teach, it's not gonna be computer science, probably, it's probably gonna be other things, <laughs> like just like career readiness, or like introspection or I don't know. I mean, in order to be a professor and instructor, I should probably get another degree, but I don't know. Maybe universities are open to me teaching their students about kind of like more real world skills about like software engineering and how to build a good product and stuff like that. So I got a couple of questions around like comparison. So how does one stop comparing themselves with other developers? How do you stop? Ugh good question. I'll tell you how I stopped. I stopped because I was just like, I realized at a certain point, it's just doesn't make sense to compare one person to another. Like if you think about all of the different experiences and identities and things that make us who we are, comparing it is just like, there's no better or worse. It's just apples and oranges. Like some people really like apples and some people really like oranges and oranges are great for vitamin C and apples are great for apple pies. Like there's just so many different axes to compare yourself to another person. Um, and you could choose to concentrate on that or you can kind of appreciate that so many people are really good at the different things that they do and learn from them kind of. Maybe this has to do with just like the whole scarcity mindset of just like what do other people have that I don't have or like why am I less than somebody else versus a bountiful mindset of just like everybody has cool skills and we all are cool and we should celebrate that and I wanna learn from everyone and anyone in that situation. But it is hard to not compare yourself. I think it's only human to do so. So it's okay to, I just think if it gets to a certain point where you're like driving yourself into the ground so much that it hurts you as a person, I think that's when it starts getting kind of harmful. So I always stop myself there. How's life? Oh, thank you for asking. You know, life is good, I guess. Like that's my answer for most of the time when people ask me, how's life? It's, uh, I can't complain, but I mean, it could always be better, but I mean, I think it's pretty good right now. Frankly, I'm in a bit of like a creative rut, which happens all the time. In YouTube world, in my work, Creative ruts happen all the time. 
And I think the first few times I was, I would always panic and be like, maybe I'm not cut out for this. And maybe this is what I'm not supposed to be doing with my life. And maybe like the well has run dry of ideas and stuff. But now that I've been through a couple of these, I'm realizing like, that's never the case. Like it always comes back. I just need to like sit and wait it out a little bit and it'll be okay. So that's kind of how I'm feeling right now, which is also why I decided to do a Q and A video compared to other things. So thanks for watching. Related to kind of this whole being stuck thing, I think some of y'all are also in the same position. What advice would you give for those who are feeling stuck slash not experiencing growth? Oh man, I don't know. It's, I think it depends on how you're stuck and how you're feeling and what you're stuck about and how you feel about being stuck and stuff. So it's hard for me to give like blanket advice for it all. But when I'm stuck, the things that really help me to hear advice wise is number one, it's okay that you're stuck. People get stuck all the time. Like there's no, there's nothing bad about being stuck. In fact, being stuck sometimes is a good thing uh, because it forces you to stop and reflect and really just like reground yourself before you move forward again. I mean, like I said, this is like literally where I am right now. I'm in one of those like, I wanna do these things, but I don't wanna do them. Okay, now I'm bored, I'm really bored, but I wanna do these things, but I don't wanna do them. Okay, so now I'm bored. So I'm just in this vicious cycle of being stuck right now and I'm just letting myself bask in the stuckness. Usually when I'm stuck, I ask myself questions like, what do you feel stuck about? Do you even know? Are you sad about being stuck? Are you mad about being stuck? Usually when I'm stuck, I'm also just very frustrated with myself. So I'm just like, okay, where is this frustration coming from? Do you, is there this expectation that you have of yourself that you're not able to meet, live up to? Why not? What's going on here, girl? Talk to me. And sometimes I don't have the answers to any of those questions and I just have to like be like, you know what, I don't have these answers right now. I'm just gonna go watch TV for like a couple hours. Maybe I'll have answers later. Other times I'll just like read other books just to like get ideas of answers. Cause sometimes in exposing yourself to other ideas, it helps you to realize what's going on inside. So recently I was reading Big Magic um, which is a book about creativity. And I was just like, I think this might give me some answers about why I feel so stuck and why it feels so bad. Sorry, that wasn't really advice, but it's hard to give advice about stuff like that, I think. Like you're just always gonna be stuck. Stuck is just a thing that happens to people. And I think everybody comes out of it in a different way and everybody needs different things. And I think figuring out what that is for you is your job in being stuck. Like I think we all become stuck as a way to ask ourselves those questions. Like the universe is like, maybe you gotta stop for a second and we need to really just like hone in to like who we are and what we're doing here. And maybe just rest a little too in the meantime. Do you feel like you need to do videos revolving around tech when you upload? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Very, very much. What was your least favorite thing about living in the Bay Area? There were a couple of things, but I will talk about one specific thing. This was both my favorite reason for living in the Bay and my least favorite reason for living in the Bay. It was the fact that there were tech people everywhere. Like I moved to the Bay Area because there were tech people everywhere and I was like, that's so cool. But towards the end, I was just like, I literally can't get away from tech people. And that was just, I don't know, I wasn't feeling it. There's just so many other ways to live and I forgot about those other ways to live because I didn't see it around me, I guess. Like the feeling of when you're coming back from vacation and you're flying back to San Francisco and immediately at the gate where you're boarding, two random people strike up a conversation about different technologies. I was just like, I don't wanna think about work right now. I really don't. I really, I just, I don't want to do that right now. I have enjoyed this vacation and I don't want to think about technology. So that's one of the reasons why I'm just very thankful to be living in San Diego now. A lot of questions around just like moving and living in San Diego in general. Is San Diego your forever city or do you plan to relocate to another city at some point? Or if I've ever thought about moving to other states, countries later in life, Right now, I'm really happy living in San Diego. I'll make a video in about a month because that'll be like my one year mark about how it's been living out of the Bay Area and moving back to San Diego. I, I think just 
summed up, I'm really enjoying it. It's been really nice. I do feel like it is a forever city, but I also know that my needs and personality and all of those things are gonna change. So I'm open to the possibilities of life, but I'm really happy where I am right now. Did you frequently feel so tired after work where you didn't have time to do what you want? Oh yeah, I mean, that still happens. Like in this day and age, you are expected to give everything, every bit of energy from my life into our work. And sometimes I end up doing that. Sometimes I love doing it, other times it feels like work is sapping the energy out of me. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I get tired <laughs> like everybody else after work. And uh, sometimes there's like weeks and months where I am just tired and I can't do anything after work. But usually there's a certain point where I'm just like, I, I gotta make time and space and prioritize for the other things in work. So how can I make work less tiring and set better boundaries between myself and work so that I can still live my life and do all of the other things. How did you manage to transition from life during college to life after college? So internships really helped in this because I had an expectation of like what work life was gonna be. But I will say in my first month, my brain was trying to absorb so much new information about how to work, about the work itself, about the company, about the product, about technologies that I was working with that I was so tired that one day of the weekend, every weekend for like two months, I would spend the whole day sleeping. Like I'd wake up at 10 a.m., hydrate, eat a little breakfast, go back to sleep, wake up at like 4 p.m., get up, like eat dinner, and then go back to bed at nine. <laughs> yeah, I, I just got so tired because it was just such a different environment from what I was used to in college, so I slept a lot. And then after like I built up enough energy and like the stamina to withstand work life, then I kind of balanced all the other things in life, like social life and exercise and eating well and stuff. And it was all one thing at a time. Um, I think the social life part came first because I was just like, I miss being surrounded by friends like I was in college. Um, so yeah, you just set up kind of like weekly hangouts on the weekdays and weekends. A lot of it has to be a lot more structured sort of because your schedule isn't crazy and stuff, but I found work life to be easier than school life because it was less hectic. And so I had more control over my life. But there were moments where I was just like, so like I just stop working at five and I have the whole evening to myself. Like, what do I even do? So it feels like I got lost a couple of times of how do I spend that time, but yeah, if you wanna hear more about this, let me know. I'd be happy to make a video about it. I know a lot of y'all are graduating and making this transition right now or very soon, so let me know in the comments. Ooh, relationship advice time. How to find a good boyfriend slash partner. What quality do you value in a relationship? Okay, this is something that me, Mayuko, currently as a married woman thinks is really important as a value in a relationship. Uh, this is something that I learned through being in the relationship that I am right now. So I didn't know this when I was single, but if I could go back to single Mayuko and tell her this, this would be it. I think the most important value is just like communication. <laughs> it's so important. Things like, you know, communicating how you're feeling and why you're feeling those things, communicating your own context and your background and why you are the way that you are and how your partner can kind of help you through that. Communicating what you need from your partner and what you can provide for your partner, communicating boundaries and limits. Um, communicating like when someone's disappointed you or when you've disappointed them, apologizing from the heart and really meaning it and actually taking the steps to change who you are, like all of those things, like relationships take so much work, like literal work. And a lot of it is very emotional. A lot of it is very difficult, but I think if two people or more are willing to do that work and are willing to set aside things like their pride and their ego and uh, put the other person first in all of this, I think that sets a really good foundation in a relationship. I mean, I think that's how like two very opposite people can come together. If you are able to communicate clearly and well and honestly and candidly and authentically and openly, all those words mean the same thing. But I think that's just such a key part to the relationship. And I mean, that's something that I look for in like all of my relationships, not just romantic too. Like when I'm hanging out with friends or becoming new friends with somebody, it's just so important to me now. What do you do on days when you just don't feel like working? If I'm able 
like if I have the luxury to do so, I do this. But when I don't have that, I will do the bare minimum that I absolutely have to do in order to not get in trouble or lose opportunities or hurt my relationships. And then I will not work. But I usually figure, try to figure out like, what is the bare minimum? And I push through it. Sometimes you just have to and it sucks. But what I do in like helping myself get through that is set up a reward system where I'm just like, wait, go, I know this sucks and I know you don't want to do it at all. But at the end of this, we're gonna go get ice cream and not just any ice cream, but your favorite ice cream. And uh, it's just gonna be great because you're just gonna be able to enjoy the ice cream, being so proud of being able to get through this hurdle in life. And you're just gonna have a great life after that, okay? So just, let's just freaking do it now. <laughs> yeah, and usually my reward system is food related because I love food. Again, thank you so much to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. I think one of the things that I've been doing in an effort to try to just like get out of this funk and stuckness is to really just like open my mind to learning new things. So things like building new skills or just exploring parts of the world in my mind and all the things that I just really hadn't done before. And Brilliant is a great platform to do so. Personally, I learn best when I'm practicing what I've learned instead of just watching lectures. And Brilliant is a website and app built off of this very principle. You learn best while doing and solving in real time. You get instant feedback through Brilliant's active and interactive learning program. And I love stuff like this a lot because there's no tests or grades or anything. You're literally just learning to learn and having fun with it too. Brilliant has something for everybody, whether you wanna start with the basics of math, science, and computer science, or dive into cutting edge topics like cryptocurrency or quantum computing. So make sure to check out Brilliant today by going to brilliant.org slash hellomayuko, where the first 200 people will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. All right, so that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed the Q&A. Oh, also let me know if you have any other like videos that you would really like to see from me. I'm taking video requests and ideas because I'm slightly uninspired right now. If y'all could inspire me with some video ideas or videos that you like, that you've watched on YouTube that could help with the inspiration, send them my way, everybody. All right, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.